Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome back to today's Daf. Bechiras Mem We are holding on the top line of the Amit. Back to the uh, listing of blemishes discussed back in the Mishnah, which would disqualify the Dikayin from serving the Migdash. So these deficiencies relate to the eyes. So we have Shtein of Lamala, Shtein of Lamata, two eyes higher up. Or both eyes lower down. Now, are we speaking about location of the eyes? They're higher than normal or lower than normal? Or are we speaking about the function of the eye? That they're just looking upwards? Or they're angling in terms of their vision, they're angling downwards? What are we speaking about? My Shtein of Lamata. Well, what does it mean, two eyes above? Shtein of Lamata, two eyes down below. Ilema. Are we speaking about the angle of vision? Ilema stay in of Lamala. So the eyes are properly positioned, but he's seeing up instead of normal. Ilema stay in of Lamala means the Chazi Lamala. His vision is angled upwards. And when it says stay in of Lamata, it means downwards. The Chazi Lamata, he sees down. And the third case, which is Einoi Achas Lamala, Achas Lamata, one up, one down. Again, we're speaking about functionality. The Chazoi, Einoi Achas Lamata, Einoi Achas Lamala, one eye is facing downwards, one upwards. So if that's the case, then what about the next case in the Mishnah? Which is a carbon copy, Hainu, so it's exactly like the next, which is Roya as a Cheder. Mishnah describes a condition where he, he'll see down and above at the same time. So one eye is facing down, one eye sees upwards. He sees the first floor of the house and the second floor at the same time. Because the eyes are, you know, uncoordinated. Unco- uncoordinated. So this last case, one up and one down in terms of functionality, is exactly like the next case which is described as a fellow who sees down below and up above at the same time. Why this repetition? Oh, apparently we're speaking about location. So that case, Cheder and Aliyah, is speaking about the angel of vision. But the first case is in the Mishnah, is speaking about the position of the actual eyes, the locations, within the wrong place. Ella, rather, Shtein of Lamala means the Kaima Lamala. Both eyes are situated above their normal location, up, you know, in the forehead. And likewise, Shtein of Lamata, both below, means they're dislocated to below the Kaima Lamata. They're below the normal location. And then when we have one on one, that's what it means in terms of dislocation. Eina Achas Lamala means there's one eye above, Ve'ena Achas Lamata, or one below. The Kaimi was speaking about location. The one is above, the one below. And then comes the next case, where the position is okay, but not the functionality. The Kaimi considered Nami, even if they're located in the, same, in the uh, proper location, but in terms of what he sees is abnormal. One eye is angling downward. And one eye sees upwards, he sees down below and upstairs at the same time, that too is an issue. It says the Gemara, what do we find in the pus? A dislocated eyes, etc. I'll consider a blemish. So the pus speaks about dak tevalu, right? Dak oi tevalu be'eno. He has a, like a sort of membrane covering or tevalu, the eyes are mixed, you know, the, the white and the black. Obviously, these are eye vision conditions. Why add the word Be'ena in his eye? Be'ena comes to add all kinds of defects found in the eye. Be'ena komash be'ena. We can't remember, based on this we learn that all these conditions are included as well. So if there's an issue of location, Shtein of Lamata, Shtein of Lamala, his eyes are too low, too high, 
or one and one, Eine Achas Lamala, and one is Eine Achas Lamata, or in terms of what he sees, it's out of, you know, it's out of whack. Veroya es a cheder, veselika achas, in terms of what he sees, he sees uh, with one eye down low, one eye above. Oy, or sideways, when he speaks to you know his friend Ruben on this side of the room, so he's facing him, but the fellow on the other side thinks he's looking at him because his eyes are imbalanced. The and the fellow on the other side, Armeli says, Armeli, you're always looking at me. Turn her up on. So back to the pasta, which will be analyzed word by word, to cover all types of eye conditions. Turn her up on either. So either means outright, blind, whether in both eyes. Whether in one eye, Bein Suma Enav, he's blind in both eyes. Bein Suma, or he's blind with one eye, Ba'achas Me'enav. What about Chavarvar? Barmai Makvuim. He has these, you know, particles, these Barmai um, Makvuim, steady stream of tears. So these, uh, these conditions, which will uh, uh, completely obstruct his vision. So it's not the actual vision that's defective. It's just that these external elements are blocking. Minayin, how do we know? They are considered blemishes as well. Tamalayim ish. Ish ever. The word ish is extra to cover these conditions as well. So now we're going to go through a full list of all kinds of possible eye illnesses and conditions, loyalinu, which disqualify a coin and seek their sources in this passage. Amarav. Lomali, the cause of Rahman, why does the Torah have to specify? Ish Iver, which in itself adds more conditions, as we just explained. And then it has to say, Dak Tavalu Be'enoi, the uh, membrane and the mixed eye. Why not just learn one from the other? Why do we have to specify them as separate? Srihi, they're all needed. You know why? Because of Rahman Iver, had the Torah only mentioned Iver, so the eye is inherently blind, right? Mishun de Lesnu Klaal. Yeah, I would say that's out because his eyes are not functioning at all. He can't see. Abel Chavarvar, but he has those obstructions which are getting in his eyes' way. This new bay has vision in his, technically his eyes can see, but they're obstructed. Like perhaps that's not considered a mum. Because of Rahman Torah adds ish, ish, even to cover those as well. Next. Because Rahman ish, the Torah suffice with that. I would say Mishum Lechal Kachazi because due to these obstructions, his vision is totally blocked. So it's a mom. Ava Machsoriya. So let's say it's somewhat affected, somewhat weakened, but not completely obstructed. Like perhaps that's not a mom to cause Rahman a dak. Here comes the next. Dak is a membrane which partially obstructs to teach us that that's also a mom. Because Rahman a dak, the Torah stops there, I would say Mishan Machasrun because ultimately it's obstructing somewhat. Avel mebabalisa, but suppose it's just a mix-up in the eye. The, you know, there's a line from the white into the black. Loy, perhaps that's not an issue. Because Rachmana Teval, Teval covers that as well. And finally, because Rachmana Teval, if you only stop there, I would say Mishum de Mbabalim, because yeah, the uh, configuration is all messed up. Avel Mishum Mishani Yusa. But suppose. The configuration is okay, but the location is off, or in terms of, you know, the uncoordinated, you know, vision, field of vision, like we said before, perhaps that's, that's not an issue. So something, you know, like that is not uh, serious enough to be... Comes the word to cover all those abnormalities as well. Says Rav, let's define it. How many categories of eye defects do we have? Hilkach, therefore, kol machmas kehiyusa, a situation where he can't see at all, ostia meish. So if there are these obstructions blocking his vision totally, that comes from the word ish, as we explained. Machsor yasa, there's some sort of weakening, uh, you know, obstruction that somewhat weakens and partially obstructs, that's uh, from dark, which is a partial obs- obstruction. Mabal belisa, if there's nothing wrong with his vision, it's just the the eye itself is messed up in there. Mishan Tavala, that's based on Tavala. Mishan Yusa. There's nothing wrong with the actual structure of the eye. The white and the black, everything is properly organized, but there's some sort of locational issue. It's dislocated or in terms of his 
angle of vision. That's learned from me to disqualify us as. We just spoke about Sochi Shemesh. What does that mean? Yosef, he learned Sonei Shemesh. A fellow whose eyes cannot tolerate sunlight, he dislikes the sun. The mission spoke about a Zagdiyon. What does that mean? Machvi, Rav Huna, Rav Huna explained, it's relating to a mismatch. Chad Mididan, he has one proper eye like ours, like his. Chad Mididu, and he pointed to the one sitting in front of him, he said, like one of those. And the first one explained, he didn't mean anybody in specific, he just meant to say, like, what are those? Something abnormal. Vik, but Rav Yudha, Rav Yudha was uh, unhappy because Rav Yudha had uh, 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 b- bigger eyes than normal, and uh, he had implied that he, uh, he perceived that he was, you know, referring to him as an example of a Balma. Meis fe comes a kash. On Rav Huna. Who says that you know a mismatched eye is a problem? Look at this Bryce. Shachvana. So one of the mumim is shachvana. What does that mean? Shachvina of shachvim. His eyebrows are so long they lie over his eyes. What does zagdoy mean? Which is very similar to zagdoyan in the mission. It's one and the same, just a slightly different spelling. Echad shachar echad lavan. We're speaking that his eyebrows, one is white and one is black. Apparently, we're speaking specifically about mismatched eyebrows. Not mismatched in terms of eye size, as per of Huna Tana says the Gemara. No, the Tana Val Mishnah used th- this term for any type of mismatch in the eye, called Zugal or Dodi. So, wherever it was meant to have a, a match, and they're unmatched, whether it's in terms of color or size, Zagdim Karli, that's labeled. Zagdun, and it's considered a mum. So whether it's a matter, a matter of coloring or it's a matter of sizing, mismatched is called Zagdayan, which is a mum. Hatsiron, another mum. So that refers to the uh, the shape of the eye. Enough true toys, his eyes are roundish. Vitsironia is really perfectly round. Doimois. That's also covered by Tziron. Doimais, they're, um, they're, they're tearing. Okay, so there's uh, constant tears coming down. Or doimais, um, sorry, or dolphais. Dolphais is even more severe. The turders, dripping even more than that. All that is considered uh, covered by the Tziron condition. So whether it's a misshaped or the uh, excessive tearing. Okay, so now we have a brisa which adds more examples of mumin on the eyes. Hazadir v'aloifin v'atumyan, which means zavir means the mazur ene. So zavir and zadir is the same. The mazur ene, his eyes are not settled; they're like darting around. Loifen means the Nishif and Zifei, that his eyelashes are very long. Tumyan means she's Tamu Zifav, his eyelashes are totally gone. Says the Gemara, missing eyelashes is a mum? I thought it's just a matter of, you know, of appearance. Marisa Ayin, you know. It's only with the Rabbana, Vahani Gabi Mum, why are we considering the missing eyelashes by the list of Mumin? But now we have a Mishnah, learned yesterday. It's only because of the the appearance. It doesn't look good. That's why we don't want him doing the avoid of Atnan. Shanasha Rusa Aina was speaking about a fellow who lost his eyelashes. Puzzle. It's just a matter of appearance. It's not really a Balmon. Says the more it depends how severe. Like Kashi. Hadish Tayyar Dumi. Depends. If there's you know some remnants left over, the base is still there. Then it's not really a Balmon. It's just a matter of appearance. Ho. Oh, where is he considered a Balmon? There's no remnants at all. It's totally, totally gone. Mission continues. Suppose the Kayan's eyes or, or limbs are not symmetrical, not proportionate, not standard sized. Einov Gedoilois, Kishalegal's eyes are large like a calf's eyes. Ektanis Kishalavas are small like a, a duck's eyes. That's also possible because he's dissimilar to his brethren, as we learned yesterday. He's not Shava Bizar Shalari. Likewise, Gufa Godlamevarov. 
his body is proportionally larger than his hands and feet. Or the opposite, Oikot Mevar of Or, proportionally smaller than his hands and feet. So he gives that disproportionate appearance. Or likewise, his nose is bigger or smaller than the uh, average nose for this body size. Choyt Mevar Mevarav, Oikot Mevarav. Now we have ear, ear issues. Hatsoyimim Atsoymeya. Which is, is it a What is that? Kosh Oznav Katanis. Super small uh, ears. What Tsoymeya means? Kosh Oznav Doimis Lesfoyg. They're closed up. The ears are closed up. They look like a closed sponge. Mm. What about his lips? Sfaso El Yoyna. Oydevas Al Tachtoyna. His upper lip sticks out past his lower lip. Or Hatachtoyna. Oydevas Al Yoyna. The lower lip past the upper lip. Harizamu. And finally, the Shanash Shrinov. A coin. Who's missing his teeth? Possible. That's a question of appearance. Marasain. Okay, so we learned the Mishnah that a Kayan whose body is not symmetrical, is disproportionate to his hands and feet, that's considered a mum. Amarav, Moshe Rabbeinu, Esram was high. Moshe Rabbeinu was ten amas high. Very tall. How do I know? Shanam the Possible describes as he erected the Mishkan. And says of Yifre says oil al Mishkan, he placed the material cover on the Mishkan. Now how high was the Mishkan? How tall were those boards? Ten amis high. And we don't find that he used a stepladder. In fact, Mfarshim explained that this was part of the service. You couldn't you have to stand on the floor. Although there's a chatzitza, you can't stand on something. So you have to be tall enough to actually reach up on top and place the material cover over the crush. Me prosy who? Spread the material, my Shabbeinu Prasai. Okay, Uksiv. And the Pasuk describes the height as being ten Amis. Uksiv Esra Amis Urcha Kurish. Apparently, he was super tall, ten Amis high. Asked the Gemara. Omale Rav Shimi Barchia, he asked the Rav Mkain if that's the case. That he was ten Amis high. Now we're assuming that. He, he, you, know, you know, an Amma is the elbow and his, the end of his, you know, of his fingers, right? That's an Amma. That's a term Amma. Now, we, we assume that the, the number 10, 10 Ammas, in terms of Meshur Rabbeinu, means that his body height was 10 times his personal, personal sized Amma, which is not typical. Typically, a person is around six amas tall in his own amma. Right? So if he's ten amas high, ten times his own amma, that's disproportionate. That's not symmetrical. That's not your standard ratio. Okay, so it turns out that Mishra Beno's hands were disproportionately smaller versus his body. Relative to standard. That's the case. You have now classified Moshe Rabbeinu as a Balmum Chas Roshom Desnan, as we learned in the Mishnah. A disproportionate body is a Balmum. Good for Godl Me'evarav. A Kot Me'evarav's body is disproportionately bigger than his Evarim. Or smaller. He's a Balmum. In this case, it turns out Moshe Rabbeinu's actual body was way bigger proportionally than his hands. Amrle Sarab responded, Shimi, you're the great Talmud Chacham Shimi. I'm surprised at this question. shall Keresh Kamina. Of course, of course, we're not speaking that he was ten times his own Amma. That's not. We're talking, he's ten times the standard Amma. The, the yardstick used to build the, uh, to, you know, to measure the crushing. There was a standard Amma size. It wasn't as per much Abena's personal hand. Okay, so that, that works. Because ultimately, he could have been, uh, you know, his body could have been six times his own ama, which is exactly standard. Chait my gadol. Extra sized nose, tana, how big is considered big? Gatsbuk tana. So it's disproportionately big in terms of being. A pinky size, a pinky width. 
larger than the standard for this uh, body size. Hatzime matzimea tono avatzimech. The Brisa adds another ear-related deficiency. Tzimech. What does that mean? Lehavu yadi rabban my tzimech. Rabban didn't know what this means until they heard this uh, Arab, this guy, call out, "Who wants to buy tzimech?" Shamu alahutai. They heard overheard this. Uh, Merchant yelling out, Dava Kaomar, he was calling out, Man de Baitzmech, who'd like to buy Tzimech? They went to check what this is, and they found Ishtakach, turned out that it was a Gadya Chaziza. A goat with super sized ears that were actually drooping down. Now they realized that Tzimech means oversized ears that actually droop down. Amr Abchist. Speaking about goats, Ez Shein Lokarnai. Okay, suppose the goat has no uh, horns. Is that kasha for a carbon or varachal sheish lekarnayim? A sheep that has horns. So both are unusual. Ksherim, look at mizbech. They're okay for a carbon. They're not considered imum, despite their abnormality. Tanam yachol. We find the same in the price. Yesh dvarim sheein kemumin. There are some conditions that appear abnormal, appear like qualifying, you know, mumin, but really, halachically, we don't consider them to be as such. Ve'enam kemumin. Ve'en kemumin. And you can shecht, even with this condition, you can shecht in the base of Middash. You can't take it home and shecht at home because they're not moon. Uh, which are like this. A is she'en lekarnaim, a goat without horns. Or conversely, v'rachel, a sheep that has horns. She'esh lekarnaim, batzimeach, batzimeh, batzimeh. Those ear-related uh, abnormalities. Om Rav Chista, Om Rav Meimar, Next step, let's say it had a horn and it was removed together with the zachrus, the male meaning the, the bone that sticks into the horns, psula. He says, that's possible to a certain extent. It's not perfect anymore. It can't be used as a carbon, but it's not considered a mum to the extent that you can just go redeem it. But nitl lafayim, suppose the hooves had been Removed, with the internal bone, psulin, in this case they're pasal, v'niftan alayim, they're fit for redemption. Chazanish explains, you see, the hooves are natural, what the animal is born with hooves, so we're deleting that, it's considered like it's missing part of the foot, it's an open, exposed blemish, whereas the horns come along later, not born with horns, so therefore it's an add on, and even after removal, it's not considered a proper moment. Maybe it comes to kasha. Our Chizu says deleting the horns does not generate mum, meisved, nitlu karnayim, plafayim, v'zachrus nimoyim. If the horns or hooves are removed with their internal bones, pisula, and if this alayim is completely possible, can redeem the animal. And Rav Chizu says it's just possible for akrov, but it's not really a mum. Like Hash, the answer is to what extent? Depends to what extent. How this akri is akri? The Bryce is speaking. The horn with the bone inside were totally removed. So the bone is completely extracted. You see a crevice, a groove in the head of the uh, of the goat. That's a real mum. Ha! Rav Chiz is speaking, the igami gumi is just a a trim. It was just trimmed off, but the, the base of the of the uh, horn of the uh, the bone is still perched in the head. There's no crevice, there's no groove there, and therefore it's not considered a proper mum. But is disqualified from Akrava. Really? Would you give me gumi puzzle? So in this case, it was just trimmed. That's puzzle for Akrava, Varmin, we have a kasha from Paraduma. Okay, so you have this uh, beautiful uh, red Paraduma Mahadran, except for the fact that it has black hooves or black horns. What do you do? Trim them off. Para Shekarneot Lafel Shekharim, a part that has black horns or hooves. Yeah, good. Just trim them off. Oh! Apparently, it does not disqualify the animal. And you're saying that it's possible. Tirgum as the Miluy Zachros. Comes the and explains that this uh, mission is speaking that he did a very slight trim. So he cut the horns above, right above where the bone reaches. So he didn't actually snip off the, uh, the bone, in which case there's no psul. But otherwise, it would be possible, and if it was actually extracted, leaving a crevice, it would be 
even uh, Balmum and Roi for Pity. We turn to Talmud Beis, to the Mishnah. So back to the Kayin, whose chest area appears like a woman, so his nipples, his breast is uh, actually enlarged and hanging down. Dadav Sheikh Ben Shalisha, Kreisei Tzava, his belly is bloated, Tabur Yoytze, his navel protrudes, Nichfe, uh, he has like an epilepsy type of condition which causes him to faint even occasionally. I feel Achsliyam even occasionally. So this unhealthy fellow was unfit for, for the Avoida. Or he's struck by uh, occasional uh, demonic uh, type of uh, spirits, Ruach Tzara Ba'alab, or, or according to the Raman Pirsha Mishnah, he's suffering from severe depression. Hamu'ujban, Ubal Gever. So the Mu'ujban, as she says, he has oversized uh, testicles, or Bal Gever, his uh, organ is oversized. Amr Abi Abba. So in the following Gemara, we're going to be imparted with advice on how to maintain our health and make sure to tend to our bodily needs and avoid when we need to without withholding because that can generate severe illnesses. So a person should be overly attentive to this uh, topic. Mashtin and Mayim Pnei Rabbim even a Talmud Chacham says Rash, you would avoid drinking in public. Or as Hesus learns, a Tanua, a person who is uh, extra careful not to, you know, tend to his personal needs to, to eat and drink in public. So even if you're not going to drink in public, but if there's a need to avoid to shed water, even in public, because it can be hazardous to one, one's health, and that's the overriding factor at play. The Tana Nami Hachi find the same in the how important it is. Mashtid Maifnei Rabm. Person meant to do that even in public, despite the lack of Tznius. Vein Shoisen Maifnei Rabm. Even if he'll avoid drinking in public, but one's health is critical, and therefore it overrides its Tznius factor. Umasa Bechach Shabikash Lashtim Maim. In fact, there was a story about a fellow who needed and withheld. And he suffered greatly. Venimsa Kreisa Tzava, and his belly bloated. In fact, it was a, sh- a story with Shmuel, who was in the middle of this great public lecture. Itzrich lay b'Shabbat Adrigal. He needed to tend to his needs while he was in the middle of the shear on the uh, Shabbos before the Yom Tiv, when everybody was, was listening to the shear, a big crowd. So instead of taking his time to go out and nod lay glima, they uh, erected this um, this curtain. And that provided, you know, a minimal degree of privacy. Also, the Kamei Davo, so when he came to his father, he heard about what happened. Amalei says, his father tells him, go back. I'll give you $400. Vizel Ahadar of the goal. And retract the story. Correct yourself. Explain to them that one doesn't even need to wait for even a minimal degree of privacy because at the Efshalach, you know, you, because of your position, you were able to, you know, have people arrange that for you to give you that privacy. But the Efshalach, a person who's not in that position, the stocking, should uh, withhold and endanger himself. So go out and teach them how important it is to do it immediately. In fact, my Baravashi, what happened? Istrich, he had a need. Aguda, while he was on the uh, plank, the gamble, this little bridge, Ashton, so he. Uh, Tended to his needs. Amrle, they told him, Hamasa Kasi, look, your mother in law is coming. You have to be with Snius. Amr, he said, an exaggerated response, but even in her ear. Health is a more important factor. Okay, now back to that fellow who had that bloated stomach. How do we know that this was the cause? With Tabak Limisham Alka, perhaps he swallowed some sort of worm that caused him that condition. Vishesis. No, 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 we're talking that. He was going forward, he was sort of um, trickling, so you can tell that his uh, system was, was, was injured, was damaged because of the uh, withholding. In fact, we have a bright person was created with two channels one for urine, one for shechazera, and they're very close to each other, and that's why there's a, the danger that if the urine is held back, it's going to create a pressure and can actually damage 
the other system. Bein benzel, benzel is there, and you only have, you know, between these two channels, just a really, really thin wall, eloke klipas hashum, like the thin uh, peel of a garlic. And therefore, b'sho shad mitzrach, when a person is in need, im niku it's going to sort of burst one to the other, into akar. It can make him barren, unable to bear children. In fact, what does the Pasuk mean? The Pasuk is hinting to us to maintain one's health in this matter so that he has the ability to bear children. When do you not have akar? When are you guaranteed not to be barren? If you look after yourself properly in this matter. When you conduct yourself like a behemoth sometimes when there's a need even if it uh, entails lack of tznius. Omar B'Shem Levi. He learns the Pasuk like this. Hashem promises you will not have akar. You'll have tamidim. You will not be barren without any students. The next word v'akara means it's going on our prayers. Your tefillah, and Rashi learns the tefillah specifically on having children, will not be sent back empty-handed, will not be barren, meaning it will bear results, will bear fruit. Before Hashem, a Masai. When is that? When you do your part. When you maintain your health. And tend to your needs properly so that you uh, do not uh, damage your system. Again, sometimes you have to conduct yourself like a behema in order to avoid damaging your system. Jesus learns a bit different. He says that it's going on any tefillah, that a person is to have his tefillah accepted when he's easygoing and forgiving. Right? A person backs off and times a machlaikis and is just easygoing, generous, and gracious. Amar Apop. This is the halacha specifically for the uh, residents of Bavel. As we're going to see later, the uh, Waterways of Babel would eventually make their way up to Yerushalayim, which was used for the mikvah, the kind of goggles. So you want to be careful not to, you know, taint it in any way. Omar Papal Yashn Adam person should not void, taint his water, Mayim, Lal Klicheris. So in your bubble, it shouldn't be directed into a Klicheris, into a, you know, a, a clay, a clay meaning, into a container which will then be spilled into the river. Lal Makim Kashanor on a hard surface, which again ends up trickling into the river. Because we learned Hani Midori the bubble, these um, low, lying, lying areas of bubble, their waters end up traveling back, channeling back to the uh, Beis Hamidosh area. Mahadri Mai, their waters end up going back to the spring called Ain Itam, which was next to Beis Hamidosh. So be careful not to taint it. Amr Abai, Hai Itis, a woman, like Tokum Lahedya. She should not taint her waters directly in front of a, a baby. But Anpe, in front of Yenuka, a baby. Agis less lamba, but off to the side is okay. Tanya. Rabban Shimon Lee Lane. Amud Hachaiser. So the uh, solid waste which backs up due to withholding, that can cause an illness called Hadroikan. Maybe Adam, the Hadroikan can cause Hadroikan. Silan Hachaiser, a stream of waste water which backs up. Maybe Adam can bring a person day, Yerokain, a different illness. Amar Rabba Bar Funa on this topic. Amar Rav Katina Amar Shlokish. Another word regarding maintaining health. Dam Rabba. Person feels an abundance of, of blood. He has to go to the uh, blood letter to do the Akaza to uh, relieve him of the uh, overload. It's too much blood. Shechin Rabba. It causes boils. Shechva Zerav. An abundance of Shechva Zerav not tended to properly. Tzeraz Rabba can cause Tzeraz. Tzoyer Rabba. Hadroikin rabba, as we learned before, solid waste causes hadroikin. Meraglaim rabbin. Overload of meraglaim. Irokin rabba. It will generate irokin, as we said before. Ruach ketzoris bolov. Another item in the Mishnah which disqualifies the kind. What does that mean, mind you? Tana ruach ben nefolim bolov. So it's a, like a spirit generated by ben nefolim, which is a certain type of. Uh, evil spirit, a shade, that uh, affects the person. So he's gripped by these, uh, um, you know, f- 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 spirits. 
tano, meshubal means bebeitzim, bloated uh, testicles, or balgever, that's the, the gid in the organ itself. Tano, the Bryce explains it further, meshuban, that's another word for meshuban, zehakayan, and agraftan, that's the balgever and the posik, zebal kik, what does that mean? Kayan, the first one is with beitzim on the beitzim, as we said in the Mishnah, meshuban is on the beitzim, and grafta, which is the balgever discussed in the Mishnah, that is going on the actual evra zachar, bagid, vad kama, how oversized is considered an issue by the gid, vad kama, machver biudad, revuchar, read the showed, until the, uh, until the knees, Tanya. So which way is it? Rablazim Yaakov Oimer, Ad Ruchav Apostol. Lamalim Ruchav Akasha, it reaches the knee, it's possible. But uh, shorter than that is okay, because that some learn differently. Ad Ruchav Akasha, until the knee, it's okay. Lamatim Ruchav Apostol, the knee, that's when it's possible. Now the Apostol also lists a condition called Muroyach Oshech. We have several ways to explain it. According to Tanakam, Enloy Beitzen, he's missing his Beitzen. Or he has them both in the. Uh, or he has, sorry, he has both compartments, but he only has one beta in one of the uh, compartments. So basically, he's meant to have two compartments, one beta in each. This fellow has no beta, or only has uh, one beta with two compartments. Hareza, that is the condition called Muroyach Ashech, discussed in the Torah, Omer That's the Tanakam. From Allah, Mer, no. Tara is talking about the beitzim, the male testicles that got liquefied. Koshini Meichu, they got liquefied the shach of his beitzim. Kiva Oimer, no, it means that they're bloated through air. Koshini Ruch, the air inside the shach of, and they're over bloated. Koshini Meichu, Koshini Oimer, no, none of the above. Koshini Marov, his appearance is dark. Hashuchan, he has a black, dark appearance. Now, why did each pick his own position? Kashi laid Rabbi Shmuel, in contrast to the Tanakhama. That Merech Ashach means that he's missing. We should have a question. Huh? If that's the case, it would say Chasar Ashach. Ashach had the Beitzim. Missing. Instead of Meroyach. Mboy Yosheh said Chasar. And that's why he went on a different uh, path. Tony, he learned the term means Shunim Ruchu Ashachav that they were liquefied. Kashli Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi had a problem with that too. If that's the uh, correct meaning, Hai Mim Royach. Just a Meroyach Ashach. Instead of Instead of um, just merech, it says mam merech asher mbeili, and therefore he learned that it means ruach. Tana yisha ruach b'achshachav. Kashle Rabbi Chanan Tignus. Finally, he had a question as well. He says, "Haruach asher mbeili." If that's the case, if it's about air and bloating, it should have said ruach asher, and that's why he learned that it's going on his complexion. Tani, he learned that merech asher refers to a dark complexion. Shemarav. Chashuchan's the complexion is dark and black. Now, how do you see that in Rurech Ashech? Oh, because how he learns that you can mix around the letters. Goyrin, Umeisifin Vedershin. So basically, you remove the Ches from Muroyach, and you take the Aleph from Ashech and replace it in place of that Ches. So now it's Maroy, instead of Muroyach, you put the Aleph in it, Maroy, his his look, his appearance, is, and you take the ches and add it to the ashech where the uh, aleph had been removed, so he turns it into chashech or chashech, so maroi chashech, maroi chashech, it's a dark complexion. Now comes the question, hainukushi, black complexion, that's discussed in the Mishnah later. The answer is, rebachanina, ben antignus letani kushi, did not have that discussed in the next Mishnah. Rather, it was referred to in Elmish. Okay, so in a nutshell, we have a long list of mumen that disqualify a kayin from doing the avoid. Different categories of eye illnesses, dislocations, mismatching, and uncoordination, all based on the pasik, with each word, each term in the pasik referring to a different class of, of abnormalities. We have a body which is pretty much okay, but disproportionate, non-symmetrical. That's also considered a disqualifying element. We discussed the goat with the missing hooves and missing uh, horns. What extent is it considered okay, puzzle, or even a mum? The Kumar advised us how to take good care of our goof to remain healthy. And... 
vibrant. And we discussed uh, several opinions in terms of defining the psal called Moroyach Oshech. All the best to you and Atzlachara.